1947, Europe was still shattered by World War II. Rebuilding was underway, yet new rivalries cast a shadow over the ravaged continent. The people of Europe, especially youth, were eager to envision a brighter future. Their yearning to hear and exchange new ideas brought 92 students to Salzburg, Austria. There, in an 18th century castle near the Alps, they attended the first Salzburg seminar. Clemens Heller, a young Austrian studying at Harvard, enlisted the help of two American college friends to organize the seminar. That first Salzburg seminar offered a program of learning and reflection for young leaders who sought to build a united Europe. The faculty included thinkers across disciplines, such as anthropologist Margaret Mead, economist Wassily Leontiev, and literary critic F.O. Matheson. All the instructors served as unpaid volunteers. The Salzburg Seminar began as a pilot program where Western Europeans studied American culture and institutions. But in the 1960s, it expanded its reach by convincing communist governments to begin sending participants to Salzburg. By the late 1980s, nearly 2,000 individuals from Eastern Europe and the Soviet Union had participated in Salzburg seminar programs, forging rare professional and personal connections across a formidable divide. With the fall of the Berlin Wall, the Salzburg Seminar recognized that the new imperative was to bring together voices, ideas, and problem-solving skills from all regions of the world. Seminars in the 1990s gathered together faculty and fellows from the Middle East, Latin America, and Africa to work on topics as diverse as multicultural health care and the relationships among trade, aid, and development. By the end of that decade, the growing influence of Asia led to much deeper interest and involvement among Salzburg and individuals and institutions in China, Japan, South Korea, India, and other parts of East and South Asia. Today, there is no shortage of global challenges to command the Salzburg Seminar's attention. Effective international agreements remain elusive in the fields of trade, environment, and nuclear technology, despite encouraging signs of economic growth and political engagement in many parts of the world. More than half the world's people suffer from persistent poverty. These same people are the disproportionate victims of disease and lack access to education and technologies needed to compete in a global economy. Religious and cultural differences ignite and exacerbate conflicts, giving terrorists opportunities to politically thrive and multiply. Rules of law and forms of civil society are lacking in regions in conflict and post-conflict recovery. Against this backdrop of new and old challenges, Salzburg recognizes new realities in the way that political positions are formed and actions taken. Non-state actors, business, NGOs, international institutions, media, philanthropy, are the new central players in achieving global consensus and in mounting effective global action. Individuals are able to participate as never before in public debate and direct action, thanks to instantaneous multi-platform communication of words and images. In this context, there is enormous unrealized opportunity for private initiative and for private-public partnership. Salzburg is poised to help foster and realize this potential. It is a truly independent global institution, credible and trusted by people from divergent backgrounds, that offers a place where those diverse people can assemble, speak freely, 
and seek common ground. Yet Salzburg needs greater human, technological, and financial resources in order to stay with selected problems over time, long enough to make a difference in how they are defined, understood, and acted upon. Salzburg has decided that greater support and wider participation are essential to its mission. In November 2005, the Salzburg Board of Directors adopted a strategic plan to guide its future work and committed $3 million in new resources to jumpstart necessary planning, staffing, and program initiatives, and to leverage the support of partners around the world. This plan affirms Salzburg's status as an independent, non-governmental organization, but challenges it to become consistently global in its governance, staffing, participation, funding, and communications. To realize this vision, the Board of Directors will play a more active role in the institution's strategic development. The Board will reduce in size from 50 members to approximately 25 over the next three years, while at the same time altering its makeup and leadership to better reflect the world's regions. A balance will also be sought among directors with backgrounds in business, government, education, and the non-governmental sector. The best minds from across sectors and across the world will continue to serve as faculty and fellows for Salzburg seminars. Each seminar will serve as an idea incubator, moving beyond lecture and discussion to develop and evaluate strategies for solving the real-world problems the group has assembled to address. Salzburg will demand more of its participants in preparation before they arrive and in sharing ideas and outcomes after they go home. Each session will produce various products. A session such as one on women and political power will help launch a network of women strategists and leaders across the globe that will include an online public dialogue around the most pressing issues considered at the gathering in Salzburg. A session such as public-private partnerships in development will commission proponents of new strategies developed during the week-long seminar to write op-eds for publication in regional media. Salzburg will join with leading development institutions in co-convening many regional conferences to develop concrete applications that will test the validity of these strategies. A session such as China's impact on the world economic order will encourage frank exchange by keeping the proceedings, like most Salzburg seminars, off the record. But on the session's final day, a Salzburg roundtable discussion will be taped to capture key ideas out of that session that will be syndicated internationally through broadcast and web channels. Each year, Salzburg will select one or two of the topics developed in a Salzburg seminar for continuing pursuit as a Salzburg initiative. Working with partner institutions, these multi-year initiatives will involve activities on the ground in various regions of the world. Each initiative will have benefit of expert advisors and a dedicated staff and will seek to produce concrete outcomes that further the resolution of identified problems. One example is Salzburg's existing Institute for Historical Justice and Reconciliation, the IHJR. Chaired by South African Justice Richard Goldstone, the former Chief Prosecutor of the UN's International Criminal Tribunals for the former Yugoslavia and Rwanda, the IHJR brings together parties from different sides and regions scarred by violent conflict and human rights abuses. Working groups brought together through the IHJR, such as ones from Uganda, Northern Ireland, and the Middle East, seek to create an historical record that can be publicly endorsed by all parties and that can become a key element and political reconciliation. Beyond such problem-based projects, 
Salzburg will also nurture a growing set of partnerships with colleges and universities interested in the development of internationally minded leaders. In 2007, Salzburg will launch the Salzburg Academy, an annual gathering of the most promising university students from across the world. This special edition Salzburg seminar will utilize case studies drawn from Salzburg initiatives and challenge this up-and-coming generation to apply itself to these cross-cutting issues. The junior fellows who attend the Salzburg Academy will be eligible to apply for internships, serve as research assistants for projects and as teaching assistants for sessions. Later in their careers, it is hoped that they will return as fellows and faculty at Salzburg seminars and initiatives. The Salzburg Academy will further widen and internationalize Salzburg's work by developing a cadre of young leaders able to think creatively across sectors and to make connections essential to effective global action. Finally, Salzburg's strategic plan also calls for a much deeper level of involvement for its more than 18,000 worldwide alumni. The goal is to ensure that being a Salzburg Fellow remains both a life-changing event and a lifelong association, one that supports personal and career growth, continued participation and powerful efforts to resolve global problems, and strengthens Salzburg's ability to move nimbly across regions and among institutions. Through a new program called Salzburg Networks, Salzburg will engage its alumni in program development, nomination of faculty and fellows, strengthening of regional relationships, and the enlargement of scholarship funds for deserving fellows and junior fellows. Regional advisory councils will be established in key areas, and staff will regularly visit regions where alumni are clustered. Through these and other steps, Salzburg is becoming and will become a more problem-centered, outcome-oriented institution. With the participation of stakeholders around the world, Salzburg will continue to challenge current and future leaders to develop ideas for solving global problems. Salzburg, for 60 years, a unique place for international learning and action. Today, an institution poised to play a larger role in a world that needs it.